A Texas mother vanished without a trace, but police would unearth clues that would lead to a shocking arrest in the case. Texas mother and real estate agent Suzanne Simpson disappeared on Sunday, October 6, around 11 p.m. The following day, her husband reported her missing. For Suzanne's loved ones, they say it was unlike her to just disappear, adding it was unusual for her not to show up to work or even contact her children. According to police, the mom of four was last seen wearing a long black dress and black heels. Officials say she hadn't been heard from or seen since attending a party in the Alamo Heights neighborhood in San Antonio, Texas. Suzanne's disappearance would spark a huge search effort for her. Investigators were initially asked if they believe foul play was involved, and at the time they noted she was just a missing person. But a close neighbor of Suzanne would potentially unlock more clues as to what could have happened to her. According to the neighbor, he saw the realtor involved in a physical altercation with her husband Brad the night she disappeared. That neighbor told authorities he heard arguing outside of his bedroom window that became louder. When he took a look outside his window, he saw the Simpsons in a physical altercation. And it appeared Brad Simpson was clearly attempting to keep Suzanne from running away. After the altercation, the neighbor told police he grabbed a flashlight and tried to look for the couple, but heard screams from a wooded area of their home. About an hour later, the neighbor saw Brad Simpson get into his pickup truck and leave their home, only to return about an hour or two later. According to police, the following day, which was a Monday, the couple's child's school called Brad to tell them their child hadn't been picked up, which was normally something Suzanne did. Then the following day, after police interviewed staffers at the school where one of their children attends, the five-year-old reportedly told staff her parents were fighting and that her dad assaulted her mom and took her phone away. The child also said Suzanne had a bruise on her elbow. Then another shocking development in the case. Brad Simpson was arrested Wednesday night after fleeing to his ranch in Kendall County, Texas, during the week as police say he appeared to be separating himself from his family. He was charged with assault, causing bodily injury, family violence, and unlawful restraint for the Sunday night incident. I want to give a huge thank you to Upside for sponsoring today's Law & Crime YouTube Takeover. If you're curious about what Upside is, well, it's a free app that gets you cash back on gas and groceries. And it's actual real cash back too. It's money that appears in your Upside app that you can transfer straight into your bank account. And it's so simple and easy to use. So once you download the Upside app, you can claim an offer for whatever you're buying on Upside. You can pay as usual using a debit or a credit card and follow the steps on the app and get paid. You can use Upside at places like Shell, Exxon, 7-Eleven, and you can also use it at fast food favorites like Taco Bell and Chipotle, and that's just to name a few. So to find out how much you could earn, click the link in the description to download Upside or scan the QR code on your screen and use our promo code LC Takeover to get an extra 25 cents back on every gallon on your first tank of gas. Again, that's promo code LC Takeover for an extra 25 cents back on your first gallon of gas. During a press conference on Thursday, four days after Suzanne's disappearance, the Olmos Park police chief said a search of the family's home didn't yield any concrete evidence that would point to Suzanne's whereabouts. Even the items located in the wooded area across from the home where the screams were heard after the fight between Suzanne and her husband Brad were determined to be unrelated to the case. The police chief said other properties are being and will be searched, but noted there are delays in obtaining search warrants, which has prolonged the investigation. Police say initially Brad Simpson was cooperative, but has since gone silent and lawyered up while sitting in jail. With Suzanne's children and loved ones continuing their search for her, they're reportedly holding on to hope she's okay. Meanwhile, her husband remains behind bars on a more than $1 million bond. Well, I want to bring on now retired Detective Commander Will Spilar to break this case down a lot further. Now, Will, it's always so great to see you. This case is pretty troubling. A Texas mother of four disappears. And while we don't know where Suzanne Simpson is at, what do you make of this case? Um, it, it doesn't look good. As you said, it's very troubling. Um, it looks like it's a domestic situation uh, based on what I've read and what I've heard. Uh, there's, there's two instances. There's one at the venue they were uh, attending. And then again at the home, and then she goes missing. Uh, not good. Mother of four, she doesn't do this. Uh, it, it just isn't good. And it's interesting that, you know, investigators initially didn't suspect foul play, but it's also been reported that Suzanne, like you had just mentioned too, was a loving and reliable person, and it wasn't like her to not speak to her children or show up to work. In your opinion, do you suspect foul play? Absolutely. I absolutely do. And, and the thing is, initially, maybe there's a there's a domestic disturbance and it's heated and she gets away for a while. 
to cool down, to let the let the uh, husband cool down. Uh, but the more time passes where she doesn't make the contact that she's absolutely going to make, uh, then I absolutely suspect it's foul play. And Simpson's husband was arrested, and the charges he faces are assault, causing bodily injury, family violence, and unlawful restraint. Does his arrest come as a surprise to you? No, not at all. Um, I think that they established enough probable cause to make that arrest. Um, in Texas, I think they're both, uh, the, the unlawful restraint is a misdemeanor unless there's another factor, which is the domestic part of it. So I think there are two felonies that they arrested him on. And I think based on the interviews they did with the witnesses and probably some video they may have reviewed at the uh, venue, they established probable cause. Now, probable cause will get you held. The probable cause and reasonable doubt are two completely different uh, things, completely different and you have to do an investigation to get to the uh, the furtherance of this crime. Again, we don't know what it is yet, but it doesn't sound good. And investigators say Brad Simpson hasn't been cooperative, cooperative in their search for his wife and didn't even show up for, I believe, the second police interview it was. What does that signal to you, especially given that he is behind bars on a more than a million dollar bond? Do you think police are now kind of connecting the clues that this might be worse than we think? Yes, I think that's exactly what happened. And, and him speaking to the police, if he is in fact guilty of, of uh, you know killing his wife or something like that, speaking to the police will not help him, and he knows that. So uh, he's decided not to cooperate. It's his right. Um, but yes, I think that he knows what's up. The police know what's up. Um, and from what I've read and what I heard from their chief, who did an outstanding job in the briefing, Um, they're doing all the right things to get to where they need to get. And as far as we know right now, this is not a homicide investigation, but talk to me a little bit about what goes all into a missing persons investigation. Who are investigators speaking to? Are they collecting data from phones? What all goes into a missing persons investigation? So missing persons investigations commonly switch over to actually more, most missing persons investigations result in the person coming home. In cases where it doesn't, unfortunately, it comes to our side of the of the, uh, the fence and in, in the homicide section. Now, what they have to do is they have to talk to they have to interview everybody that was involved, the people at the venue, the neighbor who was the outcry. Why didn't he call for twenty four hours? Uh, Mr. Simpson himself reported his wife missing, which is very common in these instances where things have gone bad. Um, they're going to do interviews. They're going to execute warrants at the house. They're going to do ex- uh, warrants of the vehicle. And I heard the chief talk about some stuff they may have already uh, obtained. Now, if he's talking about what I think he's talking about, he has some sort of a DNA uh, sample. I don't know if it's going to be blood or tissue or whatever it is. Now, you have to analyze that. You have to establish a profile to say, yep, this is, this is DNA. Now, you have to have something to compare that to. They're doing search warrants in the house. You're going to try to find uh, DNA in the house that will match the evidence that they already have. So there's a lot of forensics involved. And again, you also have four children and another and the husband living in the house. So now that's that's five other people. So, you know, the DNA is fantastic. It's, it's one of the best things we have. But it's not it's not like you see on TV. It's not like I have DNA, you're caught. There's many things that are involved, eliminating other people's DNA. So there's there's a lot of work to do, and it sounds like they're doing it. And from what we know right now, is there anything at all that suggests to you that maybe something else may have happened to Suzanne Simpson, you know, maybe that didn't involve Brad? Or do you think kind of, and again, we're just speculating here because we don't know for sure right now, but is there anything to you that points out that maybe Brad wasn't involved in his wife's disappearance? You know, you don't want to be myopic. You don't want to say, yep, I, this is my guy and that's it. I'm not looking at anything else. You can't do that in an investigation. Um, but as the investigation progresses, your scope, based on what you what you learn, becomes much more narrow. So is it out of the question that something happened other than involving the husband? It's not out of the question. But again, as the investigation continues and it narrows, um, it's, it's unlikely that something out of the blue happened. 
And what do you make of the neighbor statements to police that the neighbor heard arguing outside of his window and then spotted Suzanne in a physical altercation and she was trying to break away from her husband, Brad, and then he heard screams coming from that wooded area near the home. What do you make of just the witnesses or slash neighbors account of what he had heard that Sunday night? Uh, that, that's, that's not good. It's not good. Um, just based on what you just said, that interview is probably in an affidavit where they got the probable cause to make the arrest. So I, I don't know why people don't call the police. Uh, people don't want to get involved. Um, you know, 24 hours is a long time. A lot of things can happen in 24 hours. But that is something I think a little bit beyond just a argument in the in the street, you know, just like a domestic or your neighbors yelling next door. This this goes a little bit beyond that. And when you were a detective, I'm sure that you had spoken to several family members who just want their loved ones to return home and come back safely, or at least just have some type of closure in this case. You know, and I can't even imagine what Suzanne's children are feeling right now. What what is it like kind of speaking to family members of missing persons and what all goes through their minds as um, someone who has maybe have spoken to families in the past? Many, many times. And it's, there's no easy way to do it. And it's, and it's very difficult. I mean, you're, you're operating with something in your, in your investigative mind, you're, you know, what's going on. You have a general idea of what's happening. You cannot take hope from people until there is no more hope. So you have to be very guarded what you say. You have to take people's uh, feelings into consideration. You can't be crash. You can't come across, you know, like Joe Friday, just the facts. You can't do that you're dealing with people and you're dealing with, you know, like you said, four children whose mom is now gone. I, mean, I can't put myself in that situation. I'd never want to, but you have to, you have to consider that when you're, when you're making these notifications or you're doing these interviews, especially with children. And this has to be extremely tough for them as well too, because their mother is missing and their father is behind bars. And so I can't even imagine what that process is like. What are your thoughts on just both of their parents are gone right now. And again, I just want to emphasize that not gone being, we don't know what happened to Suzanne Simpson, but as right now she is still missing. But what is it like for families, especially with the father in jail and then the mother is still missing right now? Horrible. It's, it's horrible. And, and again, like you said, we don't know where, where, where anybody is in this, but their lives are altered, drastically altered and are altered abruptly. And I don't know if they, I'm sure they have a, a support system in the family where the kids are with, with the family. But I mean, now what do you do? You got your mom, who you want to protect, who you, you know, that's your mother. But you got your father also. I mean, you're, are you pitting uh, the children one against the other, mother and father? It's horrible. It, it's very, very difficult for, for kids, especially the younger they are. And what do you make of Brad Simpson not even being at the family home when he was arrested? He was at his ranch counties away. What do you kind of make of just his behavior and demeanor when, again, you know, his wife is missing. They've been married for more than two decades, but his behavior isn't kind of, to me, helping in his case at all right now. No, he's, he's cleaning up his mess. That's, that's what I think he's doing. And, uh, and they're going to they're gonna search. Like I said, they're going to do search warrants, I guarantee you, on the vehicle on the home, probably going to do one out on the ranch. Uh, he's cleaning up his mess. It, it's, it's behavior. If my wife was missing, and I didn't have anything to do with it. You couldn't get me out of the police station. In, in a situation like this, it, it's just it's covering his tracks. It's self-preservation is what it is. And in your opinion, what's going to be more important in this case? Is it going to be the witness statements? Is it going to be the forensic evidence? Or is it going to be kind of just the what we don't know right now as far as where Brad was in those hours that he had left um, the home and things like that. What is going to be the most important evidence, to you, in your opinion, in this case? Right now, they got a giant jigsaw puzzle on their table. OK, they get the corners together. They're putting all the pieces together. And is one piece of evidence more important than the other? Maybe. But all of it comes into play. All of it. Physical evidence, extremely important. Eyewitness, important. Uh, circumstantial evidence, important. Uh, timelines. These are all parts of the puzzle that have to get put together. So is there is, is any piece of evidence more important than another one? Not really, because you can't you can't just build a case off of one single piece of evidence. It's it's a whole process. And uh, like I said, I heard the chief's briefing. It's you're doing a great job from what I hear. 
And obviously, I just, you know, we always hope for the best and we're going to continue to keep an eye out on this case. Um, Will, I appreciate your time so much um, today. Before we sign you off, though, is there anything else um, that you would like to add? God bless them out there. I, I hope for the best, especially for those children. All right. Well, again, thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate it. Always a pleasure. Brad Simpson is behind bars in the Bear County Jail in Texas and is being held on a $2 million bond. At this time, no additional charges have been filed yet. Police are asking anyone with information about Suzanne Simpson to contact the Almost Park Police Department. Reporting for Law and Crime, I'm Elizabeth Milner.